Blizzard has something of a tradition of taking a game someone else has made and polishing away the rough edges to make it their own. They took the real-time strategy game Dune and polished it into Warcraft. Magic the Gathering had its complicated land and mana systems revamped to a deceptively simple game of escalating mana counts with Hearthstone. EverQuest had its role-playing wonkiness and need to eat and drink sanded away down into World of Warcraft. And Defense of the Ancients was reworked to be the more accessible and player-friendly Heroes of the Storm. And then, of course, there's Overwatch, Blizzard's attempt to transform, modernize, and streamline Team Fortress 2. That Overwatch is deeply influenced by TF2 is apparent when you sit down to play it. From its upbeat and cheery art style, to its character-driven advertisement campaign, to its mix of capture points, king of the hill, and payload objectives, to its core gameplay loops and class definitions. Overwatch is definitely Blizzard's take on TF2. And I find that interesting because despite all of the similarities, the two games end up creating radically different social spaces and ask players to approach them in very different ways. Specifically, Team Fortress 2 focuses on creating a social space within the game, whereas Overwatch tries to frame itself as a social activity. Or in other words, TF2 is where you go to meet your friends, Overwatch is a thing you do with your friends. And I don't know how much of that is intentional on either Valve or Blizzard's part, but both games have several mechanics and interface choices that pull them in those specific directions. Take each game's pacing, for example. Team Fortress games, especially the earlier modes like Capture the Flag and Control Point, tend to have a lot of downtime. Maybe you're an NG guarding your turret, maybe you're a sniper sitting up in their roost, maybe you're a medic waiting for their uber to charge. For a lot of the classes, there can be a surprising amount of sitting around in this fast-paced online shooter game. These quiet moments are amplified by the comparatively long length of the rounds. A TF2 match can last 40 minutes to an hour on official servers if nobody wins, with average matches of a lot of modes running 25 to 30 minutes. All of this leads to a lot of time to socialize. The game has quiet time that lets players breathe a bit and allows non-systems-based interactions like sprays and taunts and chats to matter. And because matches are so long and prone to stalemating, taking a few seconds to enter some text or put out a spray isn't the end of the world. Overwatch, meanwhile, is paced much more tightly. It aims for a sweet spot somewhere between Team Fortress 2's half-hour to an hour battles and Splatoon's five-minute skirmishes. It wants rounds that last long enough that the match feels like it has consequence and is something to get invested in, but short enough that you're never more than 10 or 15 minutes from changing things up. The result is that things are frantic and action-packed from the word go, and the game avoids a lot of the sitting around that happens in Team Fortress 2. Overwatch is very much about active engagement on both sides, rather than hardcore turtling on one side and waiting for an uber to pop on the other. And that makes for matches that feel fluid and close without dragging on or feeling like a waste of time. But it also leads to matches where there's not really an opportunity to use your spray or your taunt or your voice line, because you're always needed somewhere on the battlefield right that second. It is really rare to see someone using a spray or a taunt outside of the attack team's preparation stage. And it doesn't help that instead of TF2's single button press, you have to select a taunt or vocal line from a radial menu, which isn't the best interface when using a mouse in the middle of an action game. But even if Overwatch were slowed down to facilitate more self-expression, the game just doesn't seem all that interested in it. TF2 may have completely broken its wonderful aesthetic with hats, and that's a fair criticism, but it did so to facilitate player expression, which was clearly a value the game adopted after its initial release. Team Fortress 2 gives players the ability to build their own custom outfits from three different cosmetic slots, then paint those objects with a variety of colors. TF2 encourages players to upload their own sprays and even attach their own images to some weapons. You can name your weapons, or have them track your kills and other stats, or end up with a pseudo-random weapon skin that is technically speaking anyways, unique to you. In short, in TF2 you are an individual, and the game uses clothing and weapons and sprays and more to help you express yourself and tell your story with the game. Even how you got items tells a story, their quality indicating whether you bought a game on Steam, or popped it open from a chest using money, or, or got a super lucky drop, or were playing the game back in the day before there were qualities to be concerned about. Owning a vintage Sandman or an unusual Backbiter's Billycock says something about your history with the game. Overwatch, for a variety of reasons, seems to be disinterested in letting players be unique snowflakes. You can pick skins for each character, but it will be a pre-approved skin in a pre-approved color. 
And unlocking these skins don't really tell a story the way your items do in TF2. You slowly accumulate items and cash as you level, and with enough cash you can purchase any skin but the pre-order skins. You can use sprays and taunts and emotes, but only official ones found in the game, and only after you've unlocked them. To be clear, this has benefits. Unlike the ramshackle look that TF2 has slowly adopted, Overwatch's characters are always pleasing to the eye. They also don't exploit their user base with crates that have a low percentage chance of expensive items. You can buy loot boxes to speed up your unlocking progress, but there's nothing in the game you can't get with just time. TF2 tempts you to gamble to get exclusive rare items. Overwatch just offers you to speed up the unlocks for a price. It's stupid, but it doesn't feel manipulative. It also avoids all the issues that crop up when people decide to make pornographic or racist sprays in TF2. Cosmetics become less about expression of self to others, and more about expressing yourself to yourself. Less, how do I dress my heavy up to intimidate the enemy, and more, what is my favorite color of McCree? The whole thing is safer, prettier, and less exploitative, and I don't want to discount that. But it does kill the sense that you're you, that you have this interesting relationship with the game, and instead really reminds you that you were just Torbjorn4812 on server 523. And speaking of, the approach the game takes as to how to handle servers is by far the biggest cause of the divide in the game's social environments. Overwatch has a locked down list of official servers that players access via a matchmaking system. This approach will take a player or their current group and dynamically find a collection of other players to fill out a match, then dump the lot of them into a server to play around. This means that with sufficient players and servers, finding a match is quick, easy, and requires no effort on the part of the players. But it also means that the people you're playing with will be just algorithmically selected, and then reselected as people or whole groups quit playing the game with you. In contrast, at least historically, Team Fortress 2 has allowed people to set up their own servers so that players can connect to them via a server browser. And a lot has been made about the impact of user-owned and operated servers in terms of modability and consumer advocacy, but there's also a social angle that I think gets largely ignored. Custom servers facilitate communities in a way that dynamic matchmaking just straight up can't. Custom servers can have their own rules and map rotations. Maybe they like community-created maps that haven't been made official yet. Maybe they only like capture the flag maps. Maybe they just want a place to play two fort 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can set up server rules, not just for gameplay like player count and respawn time, but community rules. What behavior or play styles get you banned from the server is up to these small collections of players to decide. But more than the control over how you're playing, it's who you're playing with. Overwatch, by using matchmaking and official servers exclusively, doesn't have the ability to create communities. And that's why, to return to perhaps my overwrought phrasing, Overwatch is a thing you do with friends, where Team Fortress 2 is a place you go to meet your friends. Overwatch lets you load up a game against randos, and if you have other friends online who play Overwatch, then they can smash randos with you. And it's good fun, and it is social, but it's social internal to people you already know, who are already on your friends list. On the other hand, Team Fortress 2 servers can become something like an, an IRC channel or a local bar. They're the people who never seem to leave, the regulars who tend to reliably come in at certain times on certain days, and the collection of randos that fill out the rest. And in that environment, people kind of get to know each other. Especially on these slower matches that have breathing room to share jokes or taunts or express yourself via in-game items. Now this has changed in recent years. Look at this week's patch for evidence of that. And despite the game being more popular than ever, the community servers have largely died off, and I'm mostly just being an old man waxing nostalgic about a version of the game that hasn't existed in five or six years. But I know I'm not the only one who, during the height of TF2, had a favorite server where, no matter when you hopped on, you knew at least a third of the people playing, and where you felt like, even in a shallow, artificial way, you were getting to know these other people you were playing with. There were inside jokes and social hierarchies, friendly rivalries, and not-so-friendly drama. They provided, in short, a sense of community, and that's something Overwatch will never be able to offer with its matchmaking system. And let's be clear, much like everything else Overwatch does, there are tremendous benefits to their approach to things. You don't get Chivo farming servers, trade servers, idle servers, or the myriad of other servers that are filled with all sorts of undesirable folk. You also don't have servers full of dangerous chaos. There are plenty of Team Fortress 2 servers out there that are the video game equivalent of a 4chan random board, and Overwatch just does not have that problem at all. And frankly, most games seem headed in Overwatch's direction, locked down and centralized, offering a streamlined service rather than a platform for expression and community building. 
StarCraft 2 only lets you upload 10 user-created maps at a time to official Blizzard servers. Fallout and Doom have official places for you to dump mods through Bethesda. Team Fortress 2 itself was released almost a decade ago, and even that game has started to step back towards matchmaking with official servers and recent releases. The most recently announced update even introduces the idea of putting you into a clean server from start to finish, just like Overwatch, and also rank 6v6 modes, just like Overwatch, and a leveling up mechanic, just like Overwatch. And no doubt this will push the popularity of custom servers, which won't be in these quick play rotations, down even further. Times change, and we're less interested in games as a place to be social and make friends than as a means of being social with your existing friends, especially if that means building a safer and more inclusive space, which is absolutely important. But I also think it's important to not forget what we're losing as we lock things down and put everything up on the proprietary servers. What we gain in safety, we lose in community. What we gain in one-click ease of use, we lose in terms of player expression and individuality. Having seen both approaches, it's hard not to feel like we've traded one form of broken excess for another. We still long for a place we can go on Friday nights where everyone knows our name, and the house rules for both gameplay and community are just the way we like them, and we can show off our new hats or the prestigious quality of our items. And while I get why, Overwatch isn't interested in any of that. It's safer and more streamlined, and that's not to be overlooked. But no matter how much I play it, and no matter how amazingly fun it is, Overwatch will never feel like a digital home. <laughs>